Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is June 12, 2017. Wanted to take a look at our current conditions right now with our solar wind speed at 497.5 kilometers per second. Over the weekend, we had monitored solar wind speeds as low as 269.5 kilometers per second. We looked it up and it seems to be in the 50 year history that before that reading, we have only seen solar wind speeds as low as 280.1 kilometers per second, which was during the 2008 solar minimum. After observing the 269.5 kilometer per second solar wind speed, the solar wind speed gradually intensified throughout the evening into the overnight hours into Saturday. And Saturday and Sunday, they leveled off to around 400 kilometers per second. Reason being, we were such slow speeds, we had zero coronal holes to report, no sunspots, truly a quiet sun. And right now we are currently into day number three with zero sunspots right now. And the convenience of running a solar minimum channel is that a lot of times, such as this weekend, we were able to take a couple days off and predictably did not miss anything as the grand solar minimum for the most part, our sun is going to be very quiet, and this is just the beginning of that. KP indices are sitting at 2 right now, and the 24-hour max is at 3. No expected geomagnetic storms in the vicinity right now. However, we are monitoring two coronal holes getting ready to become Earth-facing. And the reason why I wanted to say monitoring is here is I'm going to show a video right now, the SDO. And you can see at the 9 o'clock position, just right at the equatorial region, you will see this coronal hole start to open up a little bit more but just to the northwest of that we have another one developing and it appears to be opening up at a, at a decent amount of time as well so we will keep our eyes on these two coronal holes as it could lead to an uptick in solar activity as far as geomagnetic storms and solar wind speeds possibly reaching anywhere from five to 650 kilometers per second over the next two to three days. Quickly, I want to move over to show what's going on weather-wise, as here at the Grand Solar Minimum Channel, we do believe that our sun has an effect on our climate. Uh, globe, we are seeing quite normal summer pattern weather. Temperatures have regulated now all over through the country. We are at least in the upper 70s to low 80s in most places. Precipitation has stuck around in the southern regions in Florida with very little breaks from the rain down there. And of course, the Midwest and upper Midwest, we are seeing a little bit of a stormy pattern this week as well as a low pressure system is moving through. Other than that, it's pretty quiet. And taking a look at our jet stream, as we see here, we are looking at a typical summer pattern right now where the jet stream has lifted up over the Canadian border, allowing some of that warm air to finally reach across areas I know in the Northeast. We were looking at cooler temperatures, just slightly below average. Right now we are dealing with a low pressure system that could be dumping snow into the mountain regions. Other than that, we are seeing pretty close to normal temperatures, if not above normal right now in the United States. With that being said, we talk about a lot of things on Grand Solar Minimum, not just solar activity, but what the effect has here on Earth. And we get questions about does all solar activity impact Earth? And I was reading a couple of things today and I found an article that I think that would be useful for uh, all of us at NASA.gov. And basically it talks about solar activity associated with space weather it can be divided into four main components. Solar flares, coronal mass ejections, high-speed solar wind, and solar energetic particles, highly charged particles. Solar flares impact Earth only when they occur on the side of the sun facing the Earth. Because flares are made of photons, they travel out directly from the flare site. So if we can see the flare, we can be impacted by it. Coronal mass ejections, also called CMEs, are large clouds of plasma and magnetic field that erupt from the sun. These clouds can erupt in any direction and then continue in that direction, plowing right through our solar wind. Only when the cloud is aimed at Earth will the CME hit Earth and therefore cause impacts. 
High-speed solar wind streams come from the areas of the sun known as coronal holes. These holes can form anywhere on the sun and usually only when they are closer to the solar equator do the winds they produce impact Earth. So basically, uh, the north and south uh, pole region of the sun, we, we constantly observe the coronal holes at the top and bottom. However, those do not impact Earth, only those in the equator region facing Earth. So that was a good example there. Solar energetic particles are high energy charged particles, primarily thought to be released by shocks formed at the front of coronal mass ejections and solar flares. When a CME cloud plows through the solar wind, high velocity solar energetic particles can be produced and because they are charged, they must follow the magnetic field lines that pervade the space between the sun and the earth. Therefore, only the charged particles that follow magnetic field lines that intersect the earth will result in impacts. So, in summary, a lot of the things that we see, coronal mass ejections, coronal holes, solar flares, the one thing in common is that they are only impacting the earth if they are in the equatorial region and earth facing. Anything else is nothing for us to be concerned with. So with that in mind, hopefully this puts at ease whenever you're observing solar activity on the sun and you see CMEs that aren't earth facing and other events that are not earth facing, just know that there is no worries or concerns at things that aren't heading our direction. Uh, we won't be impacted by those events. All right, that's gonna do it for us today. Guys, please like and share our page and we'll talk soon.